What's good guys, it's Joseph and today we're going to be creating this 3D logo animation 100% After Effects. We're not going to have to have any third party plugins on in 3D or anything like that. We're just going to be using the uh, Cinema 4D render engine in After Effects. So let's go ahead and get started and get right into the program. I got my <clears throat> got my project set up. This is the, you know, the logo look we're going to be doing. It's a little bit more stylized, but with this method you can do a bunch of different things and you can try different things out. I pretty much just learned this myself. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new composition and we're just gonna create one from scratch. So I got, <clears throat> let's go to my composition settings really quick. I'm just working at 1080 by 1080. We got 30 frames per second, eight seconds. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you want to get a logo that you want to make 3D. I'm just going to use a phase logo. It's easy to work with. It's um, pretty well known. Um, I got an AI of it because I went and made it in Illustrator. Um, it's going to make my job a lot easier if you have an AI of your logo because you can create a shape layer with that file in After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and go to my Effects and Presets tab or if you have um, FX console from Video Copilot, you can press Control Space Bar. Basically, you're just going to want to put a fill on that so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to make it white for now. I'm going to leave it the same size and stuff like that. <clears throat> if you don't have an AI, what you're going to want to do is not have your logo selected. And you want to want to uh, you're going to want to click on this pen tool right here, and you're just going to want to draw it out, whatever your logo is. And then as as soon as you um as soon as you close the shape, it's going to be a shape layer. And you can do, if it's a logo with multiple shapes, just make multiple shape layers using the logo. But if you have an Illustrator file, just right click create shapes from vector layer. And you can go ahead and delete that. So you got this, we got the fill on there, but it's not going to really matter here in a second. I'm going to show you how we're going to make this 3D. So the first thing you want to do is um, just make the layer 3D itself. And you can see up top, it deleted. It's not actually gone. The fill for it is just black, so I can make this fill white. But um, you'll notice up here, it says Cinema 4D Renderer. If I click on it, yours is gonna be classic 3D. And that's just, you know, working with, you know, normal 3D and After Effects. Y'all have probably done that before. This is no different that in terms of like workflow because you're used to it already but just go ahead and change this from classic 3d to cinema 4d and if you look over here there's um you can see what's enabled what's not enabled like you can't use blending modes track mats all this stuff you can read through it if you want so if something doesn't work and you have and you're using this renderer on you'll know why so just go ahead and press ok um, so now you'll see that we have a few different options in terms of what we can do with the logo, such as geometry and material. Um, so extrusion depth is what's going to make it 3D itself. And that's why you have to have this a shape layer, because if it's just like a PNG or a JPEG, you're not going to have that option. You're not going to be able to make it 3D. It needs to be a shape layer. But that's why you can just draw it on. And you can do this with any type of logo, like a mascot logo or anything else like that. So I, I can go ahead and, you know, make this extrude it to like 80. And you can't really see it right now unless you zoom in a little bit. But like, if I go ahead and, you know, press R on my keyboard, and bring up the rotation, I can rotate on the Y axis. And you can see that it's actually 3D, but you can't see any shadows. I'll show you how to get that in a second. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and delete, or, you know, Control Z and uh, put the rotation back to normal, you can go and what I will do is actually I'll go back to rotation, I'll rotate on the Y to 90. The reason being is you see, if you click on it, you see this anchor point here. What you're going to want to do with that is go to this pan behind anchor point tool, click on that, and then you want to drag this anchor point to the center of the mass. So whenever you're rotating it, it's going to rotate around the center instead of just like that one anchor point in the front. And like if I put it on the bottom, whenever you rotate it, it would rotate around this. So you want it to be in the center of your logo, in the center of the 3D mass. 
So now that we've done that, I can go ahead and go to my regular whatever tool. I can rotate it back and change this to zero. It's going to be a little bit off center, and you'll notice you can't use the align tab because um, you can't you can't do that with 3D layers. So you're just going to have to eyeball it. You can turn on this title action safe down here, and that's going to bring the logo, or that's going to bring up this little box where we can make our logo a little bit more centered. And so I think that's fine. So there you go. You got a center logo. I'm going to turn this off. So now what we can do is we can make another copy. So I'm going to duplicate this once. <clears throat> and I'm just going to press, I'm gonna, as soon as you have this selected, you can press enter to rename the layer. So I'm just going to name it front. And then I'm going to name this one back. And so for the front, I'm going to turn off the back for a second. For this front right here, I'm going to leave it white. I'm going to go down into my geometry options. I'm going to make it about 20. Put the extrusion depth to about 20. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is I'm actually I'm actually going to delete this one because it's, it's going to work better. And so I'm going to press R and I'm going to rotate this on the Y axis so I can actually see what's going on. And now I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to rename this to back. I'm going to put that layer behind, and then I'm going to go down into my material options, and I am going to first change the color. So go into your contents, group one, fill, or you can change the fill up here. I'm going to make this a nice red to match phase. I think that's fine, maybe a little bit darker. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the geometry options and I'm going to make that 80. And you'll see there's a little bit of overlap. So what you're going to want to do is go into P position and change that Z axis. Although it's going to, it's not actually going to work in that way. So you're going to want to use, it's only going to work if you have the logo facing you front. So I'm just going to click on this blue arrow here and that should, hold on. Okay. So click on that blue arrow and that should only move it on that one axis parallel to whatever your logo is. And so if I move it further, you see they're separated. If they're together, then you don't want to see that overlap. And so I might even want to make this front one go into that geometry option right here. I'll make it like 30, a little bit thicker. And so now I'll go back, make sure the bottom one is selected, click on this blue arrow or whichever one makes it to where you can move it. And I think that looks good. Don't want to have any overlap. We kind of want to just over or eyeball it. And so now got the front, got the back. I'm going to take this back layer, I'm going to select parent and link, I'm going to parent it to the front. And so now if I press P on my keyboard and move the front around, it's going to be, they're going to be connected. And same thing if I rotate them. So now I can see, I got two separate parts, they're rotated, it looks 3D, it's awesome. If this is the style you're looking for, that's great. Um, you can animate it just how it is. I'm going to put the rotation back to zero. I'm just going to put a little animation on this thing. And if you wanted to, you can even animate the extrusion. Um, I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial, but you guys can obviously play around with that. I'm just going to go to about two seconds. I'm going to press the keyframe for the Y rotation, and then I'm going to press P on my keyboard. I'm just going to make a keyframe for it right here, and then I'm just going to press U to have both of those keyframes up. And then I'm just going to go to the beginning. I'm going to give this a rotation about, I'm going to do a positive one right here. So it's just going to spin around once. And so as it's going forward, it's just going to spin around to the right one time. And then I'm just going to move it out of frame. And so now it's going to just kind of be going like this and highlight all these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And this button right here goes to the graph editor. So just click on that one and you can highlight both of these frames to the right and you can move them all the way to the left, or you can kind of mess around with it. You can do the same thing with these. You can move them to the left, or you can move it forward to have a little bit of a smoother start. Um, I'm kind of just going to leave it how it was, sort of. So now you got this animation here. 
that should be it. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my resolution down, and I'm just gonna preview it. And so if that's a style you're looking for, that's all nice. Um, something that you can do to make it look a little bit more stylized, how I did in the beginning of the video, is go to Layer, New Light. So you're going to want to add a new light. You can leave it Spot. You can make it, you can play around with the other ones if you wanted to. I use Spotlight. So there you go. I got one there. And so that's good. And if you want to change the settings, you can double click on this light bulb icon here. You can put the intensity up or down depending on what you want. And so now you can see it's giving us shadows and then you can just duplicate this light by pressing control D and then use these arrows and then kind of moving them around. And then you can make it, you can make a point directly at the logo. You can move it back into Z space a little bit. You can even mess around with the intensity on this one, put it a little lower. And then I can duplicate this once more or however many more times you want. And I can go ahead and put it on the other side. And then I'm just going to rotate this. There you go. And if you ever want to see them from a different angle, you can go down here. You can either, you can put two views if you wanted to, or you can just change the view you're looking at. Say I wanted to have a left view. So this is the left view. And then, you know, top, back, right, back, and whatever you're looking for. And I'm just going to go back to active camera. Um, and I can even make a new camera. And so now you can just animate this camera to do whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to leave it stationary though, just for the video. So now you got the logos coming up. It's a little bright, so I might go into some of these lights and put the uh, intensity down just a little bit because I think it's a little bright for what I want. But like that's pretty much the gist of how to do this in After Effects. Like it's looking pretty dope right now. You can kind of see. Well, you can another another thing you can do is um, <clears throat> you can go into your materials. So I got the front and the back. I'll do the front really quick. Just go down for geometry options. You can actually give it a bevel. So you can mess around with it. You can change it to, you know, have, you can give it an angular one, concave, which is what I like, or convex. Um, and you can kind of just mess around with that. It's kind of hard to see since it's a white one. Um, maybe if I put the resolution all the way up, you can kind of see. You, you can give it a, you can make it deeper, but <clears throat> it's just something to mess around with. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, you can go down here in the material options. You can change like, you know, reflection and stuff like that. Make it a little bit more shiny, um, but, or less shiny, whatever you want and kind of just fine tune it and play with it. But I kind of just wanted to share this with you guys because I feel like um, you can make a lot of great animations just by using the, this method because you can use 3D and After Effects without having to download like Element 3D or working in Blender or Cinema 4D. I mean, technically this is Cinema 4D, but you know, you're using the After Effects, you know, renderer version of it. So hopefully this wasn't too long, um, but that's pretty much what I got. I'm definitely going to be making more tutorials on how to do specific things with this method. I kind of just wanted to give like a broad, like, oh, how do you make your logo 3D and animate it? Um, but I'm going to go more in depth um, in a later tutorial. But if you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. My Twitter DMs are open as well. I try to read all of them. Try to respond to as many as I can. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'm out. Peace.